this is Trinisha Cottrell, and let's talk about why you should not have an ego. I know I came in hot, but <laughs> I gotta, we got to get right into it. So when you're thinking about your ego and different things that might have made you in the past feel, start feeling yourself a little too soon. I felt like after we had, about, <clears throat> oh my gosh, my voice is already messing up. <laughs> and and. Full disclosure, I did like a 15 minute video over on Facebook before I came here. That's why my voice is cracking already. And then I was in a few, few other things as well. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Somebody. All right. Let me put my link over here. There we go. Sorry about that. I have some people that are trying to join. Okay, nice. <laughs> there we go. I should have copied the link before I started, but you know what? You live and you learn. And so... <laughs> I do have this, but it's not going to take you right there. Thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Like if I, I couldn't choose a better tribe than this. Like you guys are so amazing. And whenever I'm doing something, whenever I am getting ready to do a live, whenever something else is coming out, you are so supportive. And I never thought that it's... <laughs> I'm going to be transparent and saying this, but I really, truly didn't think that anyone would support me. I know nobody wants to humble themselves and say something like that. No, I'm just kidding. But not a lot of people like to share that because they like, I think it's just it. For some people, it may be hard to say something like that, especially when you're trying to go somewhere else and you don't want to just speak words like that against something that you're trying to grow because you want to make sure that you're propelling forward and you want to make sure you're on a high, on a, a upward trajectory, right? So for me, I really just never thought that someone would come and support me or want to hear what I had to say. And I feel like that's a lot of what the adversary does is he'll try to tell you that you're not good enough. He'll try to tell you that you can't do the things that he always intended for you to do in your life. And the whole time God had a plan for you. And every time I start to doubt myself or the spiritual, emotional, psychological warfare starts coming in hot, I'm like, I must be on to something. <laughs> God must be getting ready to use me for something big because why else would there be anything trying to stop or hold something up that God placed on the inside of me? So whenever I'm doing something in life and the warfare starts to come in, I'm like, I got to keep going. And that's what I hope that you continue to do as well as just keep pushing forward. So why should you not have the ego? Because pride comes before fall. Whenever you're doing something and you get too prideful, it's an opportunity for the adversary to lift you all the way up and drop you off the side of a cliff. And I want everybody who watches this, everyone that I encounter, like every time I meet someone, I want everybody to be successful, everybody to do good. And I feel that way because... I stay humble. I always pray for God to give me humility and to allow me to be humble. And no matter where he takes me, no matter where I am in life, I always want to remember where my help comes from. I always want to remember whose I am and who I am. I always want to know that everything that I'm doing is not possible without God. So whenever something happens, I can't allow my ego to get inflated. I can't allow myself to start feeling myself too much. I, I really have to put my ego aside and humble myself before God and say, God, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to serve? Where do you need me to be in this moment? Guide my footsteps so I can do the things that it is that you said that you wanted me to do. Because I can make a lot of decisions in my life and do the things that I like to do, but it's not going to be fruitful. It's not going to bear the fruit that God can give me. When I do things that God wants me to do, it's like it doesn't even make any sense how it's happening. I could in the past, I would have like a paycheck. Let's say it was like $100 or something. And I'd be like, God, I don't see how I'm going to pay $124 in this thing. 
God would literally have me work somewhere and make $24 or whatever it was. And then I would be like, how in the world? (laughs) But it was because I was being a good steward. It was because I humbled myself and I went to God. I acknowledged the fact that it wasn't something that I could do alone. And sometimes we get in our own way by thinking that we're the ones that make things happen when none of that is possible without God. I I couldn't be in this house driving a car, you know, and it doesn't matter what type of car, a car to get you from point A to point B, a, a luxurious vehicle, whatever it is. All of that's possible because you decided to be disciplined. You decided to be intentional and you decided to focus on God and God blessed you for that. Everything that I have in my life, everything that I am is God. The reason why I stay so humble is because a little backstory. I'm going to try to make it quick because I don't want to take people too much of people's time. But it all started like about two years ago or so. And I was in this long term relationship with this guy that I met in high school. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to be with him because it was my choice, not because it was God's choice, but because it was my choice. And I decided to stay with him for about 15 years or so. And as we were together, I really, I really settled for it because I felt like every relationship was miserable. This was the best that every that you could get in life. I had no idea. I knew of God, but I didn't know God for myself. And so when I thought of being with anyone, I thought every person in relationships was miserable. This was the best that you could possibly have. No one would ever treat you the right way because no guy ever treats any woman right. You know, and I would see like certain people, but I'd be like, that's the exception. I wouldn't think that was a real thing, you know? And so for me, I was like me personally. And then with some of the decisions that I made in my life, I was like, well, I'm not perfect. So obviously this is what I get for not being perfect. And one day I had turned 30 and the person who I was with didn't do anything for my birthday. And I spent the whole time decorating by myself and I kind of felt all alone. I was with someone, but I felt alone. And I don't know how to describe that. And it's nothing, it's not to throw shade or, or, you know, anything at the person, but it really felt horrible. And I knew I couldn't do it anymore. And I decided to stay a few more days and I started going to counseling. We were supposed to go together, but I ended up going by myself. And my dad, he allowed me and a few other people to go on a shopping trip. And I got to buy these things that I never imagined that I would be able to have in my entire life because I really thought, you know, life was just you wake up and you just be miserable every day. Like, I know it sounds so cynical to say something like that, but that's truly how I felt like life was supposed to be. I just thought there was nothing better, you know? And so when that happened, it it did something to my soul. It was like, wow, you know, I, if I can do this, if my dad thinks that I deserve this, then I probably deserve better than this. And it literally, I had like tears in my eyes. I, it meant so much to me. I never told him or my mom, but I was just like, it meant so much to me. I was just like literally feeling like, oh my gosh, like, life could be better than this. You know, I really don't have to settle for this. And then I told God, I said, God, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't know what my life is supposed to be like, but I can't live like this. I'm tired of making the decisions on my own. I'm tired of doing things that I think are the right thing to do. And it's not getting me anywhere. I'm making all these choices and I'm literally on a hamster wheel going nowhere. And I was in the floor and in this house crying. And I felt like I had no energy, nothing left, nothing at all. And nowhere that I could turn. Like I, I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody because no one would understand what I was going through. I felt like every person would judge me, you know, or whatever. And so I was like, God, I need you. And when I called out to God, he was right there. And he told me to get up. And I said, God, I don't know what to do, but I need you. And he literally, I don't know, I want to say God's an algorithm and everything because the first video that comes up on YouTube is Sarah Jakes Roberts, Girl Get Up. I watched this video and it lit something on the inside of me. And I was like, I never, ever want another woman or man to ever feel unappreciated, to ever be treated this way in their entire life. And I don't want them to be 
in a position that I was and and feel like they might be judged for taking however long it is for them to take to heal. I never want them to feel like they're ridiculous for staying in a relationship so long when other people can't understand because they're not in the relationship with you. I see some women stay with some people so long and people are like, oh, if that was me, I would do this. And I would hear all the if that was me's when I was trying to heal. And it it really didn't help. It just really makes you feel like an idiot, seriously. And so I stayed longer because I felt like nobody understood. But for me and this program that I created, I wanted to be a place where people can feel like they're not judged and they can take their time to heal, where I speak life into the people and let them know how incredible they really are, where I let the men know that they deserve to be talked to with decency and respect. They don't like if they do something wrong and they have a woman that's yelling at them, like nothing cringes my heart more when I see that happen out in real life. And I know like, we probably want to say they deserve it because they did this, they did that. But if you ever feel like you get a position in a position where you lose yourself and your mental capacity, you have to walk away because it's not healthy for either one of you. And you deserve God's best. You really do. And so I really want the men to be leaders. I want them to know how incredible they could be with God. The women, I want them to know that they are incredible, that you literally are somebody's helpmate. You are beautiful and smart and intelligent and you are kind, you are patient. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror. Do you know how strong we are as women? Like if we could end the division and stop making it seem like one person, one sex or another, or one person is better than somebody else and put our egos aside, and really start to come together, we could literally take over the entire world. We could change everything. And that's where I come in with God's blessing, allowing God to to use me as a vessel so I can help those people. I want them to see that there's more to life, that you really don't have to just settle for less than God's best. You don't have to settle for breadcrumbs. You don't have to settle for gaslighting, whatever the other new terminology is that people are using. Like you deserve to be treated like Christ loves the church. Men, you deserve to be respected like it says biblically. It's time for us to end the ego and to really step into our purpose. So if you are ready to step into your purpose, I have a freebie for the people that watch and the people that have been supportive. And if you put in the comments that no more ego, I'm going to drop, I'm going to send you over a freebie. And when you're ready, you can join in my program and I will personally help you and serve in any way that I possibly can to get you where it is that you're trying to go in life, whether it's, it's healed so that you can be ready for a relationship or it is in your purpose. I'm gonna be that person that is gonna have a no judgment zone at all. I have made so many mistakes in my life. I don't feel like I have a right to judge anybody. So when people tell me stuff, when people are going through things in life, I'm not like, oh, you shouldn't do this. I don't know what I would do in their situation. I, and I would hope and pray that I could handle it with as much class as those people have in their life. So <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being here for day 30 of 30 Days of Purpose. I, it means so much to me. And I really love helping and serving people. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to have like a content schedule that I will send out. I know I will be doing probably at least one video, maybe two videos a week. And I will send out the days and other content will be out for your con consumption. So thank you so much for being here with me, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will definitely be sending out a post with the updates for the content schedule and definitely drop the comment in the description and I will send over that freebie. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>